Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to be working on our laundry area and our upstairs bathroom and we can get into working on that now with our uh, bifold door that we left out last time. We'll just turn the roof off and uh, get into this area here. And so if we just look at our blueprints, we can toggle those on. You can see that it opens up to the right and I guess so yeah, just what folds up against the wall there. And I guess so what we can do is we'll just take our door from the bathroom here and we can sort of shift it over to this area Try to find a place where we can line it up. I don't remember what the measurement between this door frame was. That's a uh, two foot eight and three sixteen. So that wasn't changed to match the other dimensions that we used uh, from last time, which would have been, I think that was about two foot four. And these, the rest of these doors are about two foot six, excluding of course the uh, sliding closet doors. I'll just move this door into place here, slide it into the corner and turn off shadows. Uh, move it over an eighth, move it down an eighth. And so originally these doors were made into temporary groups uh, because we wanted to include the hinges. So we can just right click on it. We'll say make component and we'll go into it and we'll make sure that the door itself is a unique component. And we can go in, we'll get rid of the handle. We don't need that and get rid of it on the other side there. And we can back out again. So now we can take the door here. We'll explode the door because the door itself should remain a component and we want to get this hinge off the side of it. So now we should just be able to copy and sort of cut the hinge off the side there. And we can paste this elsewhere. Kind of just want to have it uh, on standby and we can get rid of the bottom hinge. And so now we want to split the door down the middle. So we're going to have to find the middle ground. So we'll actually just draw a line across the uh, door frame here. And then we can slide our uh, pencil across to find the middle there. And then we can drag out a guide a 16th of an inch because we'll want to have an eighth inch gap between where we can fit that hinge. So we'll slide out another 16th on this side and then drag our guide across from there and match it up with these guides on the floor. That erase that middle one there. We'll slide this across to here and we'll just see what the uh, space is. That's four inches. I can bring this across four and see what that looks like. Uh, it might work out. I'll make sure we do that on the other side and hit K here and we'll pull this across to that side and pull this across to that side. And so now this is supposed to be four inches. So we'll drag that out four inches there. We can slide this across to here. Uh, and I guess just erase these uh, lines, likely just remnants from stuff inside the door. There we go. And that'll leave us with one door. So now we can just take the uh, component itself. We'll slide this across to there, drag it over an extra eighth. Now we'll take the hinge and I guess we can start coloring these as well. Go into this one here and, and uh, paint that one a gray color. Make sure that that pin is gray as well. And we can move this over to here and just uh, try and slot it into this gap. And we'll just go over and see what our hinge heights were on the other doors. And that's, this one here is six and a half from the top. This one here is about 10 inches from the bottom. So we'll go with that. So we can say uh, 6.5 from there and then about nine and a half from the bottom. And we'll just slot it in until the, uh, the pin is quite close to the door panels. I guess that's as far as it will go before it uh, sort of snaps too far. Yeah, we'll leave it there. And we'll just grab it and slide it down to the uh, six and a half inch mark right there. And then we can, we'll just say M and control and grab another one and slide it down to right there. There we go. We can erase our guides and we'll just grab two of these hinges again and slide them over to here on the red axis. Make sure they're touching the door right there. I think in this case, we'll actually model it so that this door sort of remains open so we can see into the laundry area. And so what we can do there, uh, we're going to need to move the hinges so that the pin is actually on the outside. But what we'll do is rotate this first. We can take our rotate tool or just a Q on the keyboard and we'll sort of get to this bottom corner here and draw a line out on the base of the door. And then once we click once, we can drag it out. And we'll say not a, not a full 90 degrees, but to about here. And then we'll want to take this corner of the door and move it over to here, move it an eighth of an inch away, and then grab this corner and rotate that. Again, not a full 90, but fairly close. And we can start putting a, a track down here as well. 
but we'll just move the hinges into place so that they uh, sort of line up with where the door is. Take the two of these, hit S, we can do a minus one. Just need to make sure that we can actually get the middle point there, not the two sides. So we'll drag it out a little bit. Try this again. There we go. Now we can drag this out. And we'll make sure we keep it on the green axis. And we'll bring it right to there. And then we're going to have to uh, explode this and take this hinge. And now essentially try and find the middle point of this uh, pin. And then rotate this out like that. And we're going to have to move the door out a bit further. Try and slide it over to there. And that looks fairly decent. We'll try and uh, adjust this hinge again. And now we'll have to try and line up the door with the hinge right about there. That'll work. And then I guess essentially what we can do rather than uh, doing that again down here is we'll just delete that hinge and then uh, bring this one down to there. So we'll just duplicate it, slide it down on the blue axis. Then we'll drag a guide up 9.5 and then slide it up to there. I'll slide this door over and uh, make sure we can get that eighth inch back right there. And so now we can try and find a place where sort of the square parts of the hinge actually come out past the edge of the door. And then we can uh, we'll explode this one as well. Take this side of the hinge and rotate this. Try to find the center here. Rotate that. And actually maybe move this out a little bit further. Now try it. And right around there is where it lines up. I'll do this side. We'll work on this one. And now what we'll have to do is sort of pull these out a little. And just keep adjusting it until we can get it close. Uh, and likely what would have been a better uh, idea to do was to actually include the hinge as part of the door uh, at the right height and then just sort of sliding in the pin and matching up the two measurements. But uh, it's not too bad, it's a little technical, but for the most part, it's just a matter of trial and error until you get it to line up. There we go, slide it to there. And now what we'll have to do uh, is slide this whole unit over a little bit until we can match it up with the edge there, and then move this over to about right there. I'll just see what all that stuff looks like. It looks like, yeah, it matches up pretty good, so we can leave it there. And now we'll just make sure that that's the correct uh, nine and a half on the bottom. Just about, slide it down on the blue to about there. Erase that guide, and then we can slide this up to six and a half. Right there, 6.5 is there, and then bring it down to there. So we can erase those guides and delete that hinge. Now there's our bifold door, uh, and it's not technically attached to a track, and it probably should be, so what we can do is actually move this in a little bit so that we can sort of uh, introduce a track into this. And so we'll now sort of grab everything. We'll make sure we have the hinges, the doors, all that, and then we'll just group it. There we go. Say group, and we'll say uh, closet door full. We'll actually probably move this outer edge in a couple of inches so that we can sort of put a track right there. So we'll probably just say uh, 1.5 inches like that. And then what we can do, we'll go into the door frame on the second floor and then push this in 1.5 as well as the sides here. And push that to there as well. And we'll drag this out one inch and we can put in a line here and then pull that down somewhat, uh, I guess, flush with the door right there, and then pull this down to the tops of the doors. And now I guess one of these doors is a bit higher than the other one. Height here is about a half of an inch. The height here is three eighths. So I guess we can go with that. We'll get out of here, get into the uh, closet door and move this up. And we'll just hold shift and then bring it up to the height of the, uh, up to the height of the other door. Now we can get back into here and pull this down to the top of that. And then we'll bring in some, uh, I guess, eighth inch guides either side here. Drag a rectangle across. There we go, like that. Now we can push this up. We'll say uh, maybe a quarter of an inch like that. And then we can sort of do a similar track on the bottom, but uh, more of a guide rather than the track that it's going to run in. So get into the floor, draw a line across here. Erase that line that fills in. Drag this out an inch. 
drag this across to the other side there and then pull this up so that it meets flush with the doors there we go then we can drag these over an eighth again and then fill that in with our rectangle and then we can push these down a 16th like the uh, closet runners that we had and then that will be the top and bottom track and that'll do it for our bifold. Uh, what we can do is go ahead and put a little doorknob on it. And we can take that from the kitchen downstairs. So we'll go into our layers, turn off the second floor. I guess we can make our doors part of the second floor component now. Or a second floor layer, rather. Now we'll just take one of the knobs off one of these cabinets downstairs. And we'll use that upstairs. We can just go into our door here and paste it. And we'll try and find the angle. We can take our protractor tool and then just line it up with this corner here. And then we can uh, keep it on the green axis and slide it over to the end corner of this door here. And it says 7.1 degrees. So now what we can do is essentially do the same thing. We'll take our move tool now, keep it on the green, and then angle it until it says 7.1 or even just type in 7.1. There we go. And that'll line it up. Now we can slide this in so that it meets with the door. And we'll just get our door heights from the other doors. It was two foot, basically two foot, uh, I guess three feet high. Bring this up three feet and then slide this up to there. You know, delete our guides. There we go. And that is that. So now we can move into the actual washer and dryer, which we'll try to get in a two in one sort of stacked on top of each other. And we can uh, look for one of those on the 3D warehouse. And so I guess we'll go ahead and download these two. One's a washer and one's a dryer. And so we'll go ahead and get the washer first and put that on the bottom and just sort of uh, slide it into position there. Uh, and it's fairly high poly, but some parts of it are definitely a mess. So we'll need to go in and sort of decolor and recolor a lot of this, get rid of the textures and that sort of thing. We'll go and get the other, we'll get the dryer now and put it on top there like that. Slide it over, slide it up and bring it right out to the corner. And slide it out to the front, match them up a bit. And we'll actually separate these a little bit, presuming there's feet underneath. Maybe say a sixteenth of an inch, something like that, maybe even a bit more. And so this is our washer and dryer. Now, of course, we can't really leave it like this because the buttons are on the top here, and that's kind of making them inaccessible. So what we'll do is I will actually invert this. We'll rotate this minus one and put the dryer upside down on the top of this. That'll make the buttons a bit more accessible. Then we can go in here and erase our logos and that will sort of resolve that problem. Now we can actually kind of smoosh these down maybe a little bit further and uh, that sort of remedies that problem. And so uh, I guess that will do it. Now there is a sizable amount of space back here but we would need that for plumbing and uh, sort of ventilation to the back of the house anyway. And I guess if you want, you could put a vent on the back of the house. I don't think we're going to do it uh, because I don't think it's necessary. But if you are following along and you want to do it, you can go ahead. Uh, and so that will do it for that. We could reset this back to white, actually. And I think in the case of this button here, we probably will just mimic the gray that this is using. Try and get rid of that texture. Now this could actually be cleaned up. There's a lot of little random lines sort of hanging around here. But I think what we'll do is we'll wait to see what this looks like in rendering and uh, sort of go from there. And there is, however, a corner missing right here. So we will sort of fill this in like this, paint that, and then just sort of soften these with the shift eraser. And so now what we can do is uh, start working on our shower. If we just turn on our blueprints, we can see sort of where that is. Uh, and that uh, we'll just pull out some guides. That's to about here. We can say maybe even three feet. Might be able to get away with that. And this will be an open shower. And essentially that means is we're just going to have a sort of a piece of glass here and then you can sort of walk in around. We'll have the shower head sort of on this side. And so we can hide the blueprints and uh, we'll just go into this part of the uh, baseboard and we'll actually cut this off right here. Draw a line down through it and then erase. There we go. And then fill this side back in. And we can cut this side off as well. Fill that in. Cut down through here. And erase that and then erase this entire piece right here. There we go. And we can back out of the baseboard and get into the second floor component. And then what we can do is just draw a line across here where the baseboard is that over. We can say maybe four inches. We're going to need some sort of a wall, maybe even five inches. Add another inch there. Drag a line across there. Pull this up. We'll say five inches. Uh, and this will act as sort of a step to contain the water within the shower there. 
And then we can pull some of these up. This will go, I guess, to the ceiling. I suppose the question is, should it go to the ceiling or should it sort of cut off at some point and then just go flush to there? Uh, and I think we will. We'll say maybe eight feet, maybe even nine feet, uh, just so we can have some pot lights in the shower. And drag this line to there. Can drag these lines up to the ceiling and pull this across to there like that. And now what we'll actually do is pull this down five inches, sort of to match the bottom. So we can pull this over five inches and then uh, draw some lines in for the ceiling of the shower. I can erase that, reverse that face in there, and even delete those lines on the top there. We can erase those lines, drag a line down from the top, pull this over, say, two inches, and uh, do sort of the same thing on this side. Erase that face, and erase all these sort of uh, joining lines on the edges. Now all of this will be tile, but we will need an edge to go around on the tile so we can sort of offset this in. We'll bring it in, say, uh, 0.25 on the edges, and that will sort of serve as our plastic pieces, say 0.25. And we'll just want to offset the edges, uh, the inside edges of the shower. So we'll grab those four lines and then offset out 0.25. And this is primarily being done just for the texturing later, uh, but we can probably do some coloring now as well, just to indicate. 0.25 there, erase that, and erase this line, miss that one. And then we can offset this one here, and that should do it. And so now we can leave that layer and uh, just draw in our glass piece. We don't want it to go all the way across. Maybe to, uh, maybe I guess we'll judge the berth that we have say two feet on this side, and then we'll bring the glass to there. And we'll drag our line around there. There we go. I can grab this piece, we'll group it, we'll say shower glass. And so now we can go in and we'll push this across, maybe even just a quarter, quarter of an inch thick, 0.25 like that. And we can go around and push it in an extra eighth on all sides, because we'll put little brackets holding it on the edges here. And down an eighth there like that. So now we can triple click that and we'll actually sample the window here and paint it the same color as our window glass. And so now we can make a little bracket. And so what this will look like, essentially we'll just draw in a little square. We'll make this uh, maybe a half of an inch across, or I guess it's gonna be a bit wider than that. We'll say 0.75 to there. We'll make it an inch long, maybe uh, 1.25 long actually. Pull that down to there. And so now the middle here is going to need to have an eighth inch gap either side to sort of fit in our glass piece. And then we can have uh, maybe even, uh, we'll say another, an eighth inch piece either side of this. And so we can drag in our lines here, pull this down an eighth either side, an eighth in the middle, and then pull this up a quarter of an inch like that. Erase these lines a bit shorter right there and make these a bit longer. There we go, now we can click that, group it, and we'll say uh, shower support. Now we can slide them into place, and we'll put one two inches from the edge on that side, drag it on the green, and we'll say two inches from the edge here. Now we can take both of these and slide them down to the bottom, and uh, reverse them, say minus one, slide them down to there, and now we can just take this one, we'll rotate it 90 degrees, and we'll line this edge up with the inside of the glass, and then make sure it's sort of flush with the, uh, I guess the edge here of the glass rather than the base, and then push this in two inches, and drag one to the top and do the same. And now we'll try and find one, and uh, we'll try and find the middle and put one there as well. Drag a guide up from the edge right there. Slide this one down. And right there, and erase that guide, and there we go. And now we can try and find ourselves a shower head, so we can pop back onto the uh, to the warehouse again. And uh, there's all sorts of ones available here. And I guess maybe we'll go with one like this. And download there, paste it there, and then move it out from the wall, rotate it around. And I think for this, actually, we'll need to turn on profile just so we can sort of see it a bit better. And find a place to put this up against the wall. Find a center point first, right there. There we go. Now we sort of need to find our optimal height. 
being sort of a taller person, uh, having a high shower head is actually kind of nice. So we'll say six foot six and make sure that we put it at least there. And we'll, I guess, place it right around here. So that'll work. And then what we'll do is uh, turn off the second floor and then just make sure that all this stuff is on the second floor layer and then grab one of the sort of pot lights from downstairs and then head back up to our shower and paste one up here as well. And we'll try and find our center point again, right there. Slide this to here and there we go. You can erase our guides now and that can sort of be our uh, moonlight shower, I believe it's called. Uh, and so we can pop back out of here and we'll turn off profiles again because that does eat up a lot of performance. And then sort of just to start cluing all of this stuff up, we'll actually go downstairs again and we'll actually grab this light switch because we want this dimmer. So what we're going to do, we'll take this and bring it back upstairs. And then from our baseboards, uh, drag up a guide, three foot nine and 15 sixteenths, which is the height of our light switch. We'll paste the light switch here and then we'll hit make unique on this, head into it and delete these switches and hit make unique on this panel as well. We can go into it, erase this line and this is being dragged over um, three and three quarter inches. So actually we'll just see what this is. That's three quarters there, 0.75. And then we can pull this side over to match and just erase this line. Uh, and maybe what we'll do, we'll actually explode this, explode it down, triple click it, group it, call it our dimmer switch, just to make it a unique component. And we can leave that there or roughly about there. We kind of want to have this next to uh, where the shower is just so it can be something you can adjust without having to leave the bathroom. And now what we can do is we can color our shower. I'll turn hidden geometry off. We can go into the second floor component and we'll grab our red. We'll do the trim first here. That's that colored. And now we can adjust this. This is gonna be sort of a lighter color than the tile. And that'll sort of be, I think maybe almost a yellowy, uh, I guess maybe even a similar color to the cabinetry downstairs. And then we'll go in and color the rest of our tile and actually get out of the component there so we can kind of see how everything matches together. Drag this down, make it a uh, very, very low red. Maybe brighten it up a bit. Maybe, maybe even about there. I think that looks good. Take our shower head piece and uh, make that silver or a gray color. And we'll actually go in and uh, I guess even change the color, make the color of these pieces a bit different. So there's some uh, sort of variety in the colors going on here. And all that, of course, helps with the realism. Maybe even this button here will change this, or this little switch, I guess. We'll make it a bit of a darker gray. And then we just need to sort of color these little pieces. Just go around and grab all these, make them red. We can adjust that red down. We'll probably make this almost sort of a darker plastic color, almost a gray, something like that. And that will sort of do it for our coloring. And now we just need to uh, make a drain. And I think we can probably do that ourselves. Just take a circle here and uh, make sure that we have, we'll say 60 sides. Drag this out two inches. That'll just sort of give us a four inch drain. We'll double click it, group it, and we'll say shower drain. And we can go in and pull this up, say a sixteenth of an inch. You don't want to stick out too far. And we can offset this in a little bit to say 0.5. And then what we'll do is we'll offset this again, about say an eighth of an inch, maybe even a bit further than that, add another sixteenths to this, erase that line. And then we can push this down and we'll bring that down an eighth of an inch. And we'll have to go out here again and lift this up. We'll say lift it up an inch and then uh, drag this down 0.5 and then push this top edge down about an eighth of an inch, I guess to there. So that's already sort of where it should be. And we can push this down another, say eighth of an inch, bring that down to there, reverse that face. And then what we'll do is we'll take this inside ring and uh, if we can just get the edge here, we can sort of scale this in. So you can sort of see it to there. And then what we'll do is we'll take this ring and bring that down to about an eighth, reverse that. And then we can sort of scale this one and we'll bring that to about there. And that will sort of serve as our drain. The water can sort of flow into this and uh, that can essentially go down a drain in there. So what we'll need to do now is find a way to sort of implement that into the floor. And so what we'll do, we'll drag, we'll go into the second floor component, 
drag out some guides to sort of center where we want the drain to be. We'll say right about, say, one and a half feet. And then we can drag out a circle, uh, say 1.5. Not quite as big, but we'll just make it that size so we can drag it down. Then we can go out. We can take our drain and drag it over to here. And then just drag it down. And then drag it up a sixteenth. So that's not sticking out too much. And then just drag it over to there. And I guess we'll need to make that hole a bit bigger so we can drag it back over this way. And then we can just offset this a little bit, to maybe to about there, and then push this down. And drag this over again to about there. There we go. And then we'll just go in and say intersect faces with model so that we get a line to go around the edge there. And then we can just paint this uh, probably the same color as the shower head. So we can go ahead and sample that with the Alt key and then uh, paint the drain there, delete our guides, there we go. And then to finish off this video, we'll go around and paint all of our trim, the uh, correct colors, uh, which essentially should just be the trim colors from downstairs. So we can just go down, we'll sample some of the trim, and then we can get into uh, coloring this stuff. Now, of course, it's sort of difficult to see that this is even colored. And so we'll just remember that this is on two, and we'll actually scale this up so that we can tell what is colored and what isn't colored and then just uh, bring that down to 2% afterwards. Now as for the baseboards we can just sort of uh, select and color these. We don't need to go into them and paint them all the individual faces. We can just paint the components themselves and that should be fine. But because all of the door frames are actually part of the second floor component we will need to go into those and paint them individually. Now there's of course really not a whole lot to this. It is just going around and making sure that everything is colored. But having something bright that contrasts the default white really helps. Uh, and will probably save you some time as well. Alright, so I think that will do it for all of the trim. So now what that means is we can actually go in and pull this down to 2% again. And uh, sort of make the trim color what it was. Alright, so that will go ahead, I think, and clue things up for this part. Uh, we can get into finishing this bathroom next time and figuring out what we're going to do with that, bring up some of the light switches and things, uh, and maybe some other little flourishes as well. But thank you everybody so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.